the history of hyperkalmic periodic paralysis originated with the first host of the disease. The disease only affected horses because it spread through heredity. The host that the scientists tracked back to was a horse that was one of the best, if not the best, in its time. Its name was Impressive. Impressive won 31 first place blue ribbons out of all 31 contests that he was entered into. Later on, he became one of the champion horses of his time. Even at a certain point, Brown University tried to buy him for $300,000, but even the owner declined. This horse was so amazing that thousands of people paid to have the horse become the father of many foals, which are children horses, but this only resulted into the rapid spread of his disorder. Vets used to think that it was a different disease because it looked like a disease that had already been characterized by the odd twitching. Although nobody knew that Impressive was infected by his small mutation due to the fact that he did not suffer from any of the symptoms. Therefore, it took a while to see that this disorder all started from a single horse and was purely hereditary based. To this day, he has an estimated 100,000 descendants and any newborns must be tested to see if they have the disorder. If they do have this disease, then the owner must make sure the horse is taken care of properly and not allowed to spread the disorder. Impressive syndrome has many signs and symptoms, most of which relate to the muscles. The first visible signs are uncontrollable muscle contractions. These attacks last anywhere from 15 to 60 minutes long. The horse will usually collapse and become unable to move. The muscles become stiffer and weaker as time passes. Paralysis may also accompany these attacks. The breathing may be loud as a result of the paralysis of the upper airway. In severe cases, death may occur from respiratory muscle paralysis or heart failure. Unfortunately, determining when these symptoms may show up is difficult as its first symptoms can begin anywhere from birth to the age of 15. In hyperkalemic periodic paralysis, muscles are hyperexcitable, which means there are abnormalities in sodium and potassium levels. The problem, though, is in the muscles, not in that potassium-regulating hormones. The fault is in a protein called voltage-gated sodium channel, which is found in the membrane of muscle cells. The channel normally allows the movement of sodium particles. These particles carry with them a charge, causing the muscles to either contract or release. In impressive syndrome, the channel has temporary failures in the flow of sodium particles, which result in muscle spasms or muscle failure. This fault in the voltage-gated sodium channel is caused by a mutation in the gene that codes for sodium and potassium regulation. The mutation causes an abnormal version of voltage-gated sodium channel that does not properly transfer sodium, which causes unstable electrical currents in muscle cells. These bouts of muscle failure, due to the problem with the channel, are not brought on by exertion or fatigue, and often happen during periods of rest. This characteristic distinguishes hyperkalemic periodic paralysis from rhabdomyolysis, known as tying up syndrome, which occurs during exercise or from illness. Impressive syndrome is also mistaken for seizures or confused with lung disease due to the heavy breathing during episodes. According to the American Quarter Horse Association, hyperkalemic periodic paralysis can be diagnosed in one of three ways. The first test is the potassium chloride test. This is a risky test, but it detects high potassium levels. The next test would be the electromyography. This is safe, but it is a little more complicated. The third test would be the DNA test for the defective gene, which tells if the horse is a carrier and has the disease itself. Now, there's a couple ways to treat hyperkalemic periodic paralysis or impressive syndrome. There's first the exercise and low diet of potassium, which can help the horse survive and live a little longer. And there's also the opportunity to selectively breed out HYPP. Now, this can be used to prevent any further cases in future breeds of horses and hopefully one day eradicate this terrible disease that affects many horses throughout the world.